All right, let's look at our next reaction. We're going to be talking about a brand new type of reaction called radical reactions. These are not going to be a two electron process, right? We're going to be looking at one electron reactions. We're going to be looking at free radicals. So we're going to be talking about a single electron, not lone pairs. And this is a new type of reaction um, that we're going to be learning. We're going to be using these radical reactions to um, synthesize alkyl halides or allylic halides from alkanes or alkenes, okay? So there's going to be sort of three parts to this video. First part, we're going to kind of just talk about the reactions. Second part, we'll talk about the general mechanism of radical reactions. And then third, we'll talk about the mechanism of the two reactions that we learn. Okay. So let's first talk about the reactions. Okay. Let's talk about the reactions here. There's really going to be two reactions we're going to talk about. First, we're going to take an alkane. We're going to take an alkane, and that's going to react to form an alkyl halide. Okay? So if you remember when we first started talking about alkanes, we didn't cover any reactions, right? Um, most textbooks like to start talking about chemical reactions with alkenes because there's not a lot of reactions that alkenes can do, um, especially reactions that we cover at the sophomore organic chemistry level. But this is one important reaction from an alkene, and we can form an alkyl halide, okay? So if I take an alkene, all right, and I treat it with... Br2 or Cl2, right, or Cl2. And I'm going to be using light. I'm going to be using light or a radical initiator. And we'll talk about what that is a little later. So generally we'll be seeing, we'll be using Br2 and light. What we're going to do is replace a hydrogen with our halogen, okay? So there's lots of hydrogens in this molecule, but we're looking for the hydrogen that's on the most substituted carbon, okay? And I've drawn that hydrogen in here, right? Obviously, there's three hydrogens on that methyl, two hydrogens on every carbon on the ring, but here we have one hydrogen connected to this carbon here. So in this reaction, when you take an alkene and treat it with Br2 in light, we'll find the most substituted hydrogen and replace that with a bromine. Okay, so let's look at another example, a couple other examples here. If I take this compound, okay, now I'm going to be using a different reagent, NBS in light, okay? NBS is basically a source of Br2, right? So NBS stands for N-bromosuccinamide. Oops, sorry. Drew an extra carbon there. Okay, so there's NBS. This is just a source of Br2, right? So for these reagents, we can use Br2 or NBS, right, and light. Again, that will replace the most substituted hydrogen with a bromine, right? So if you look here, these two carbons both have two H's. So I could put the bromine at either one of these positions, but it's the same compound, right? If I drew 
the compound like this, that's the exact same compound as above, right? So I can put it in either spot. Okay, so in our first reaction, we take an alkane, we treat it with an alkyl halide, and we're either using Br2 in light or NBS in light, okay? So the reagents we are, are Br2 or NBS and light, okay? And then of course, you can also use Cl2 in light, but it turns out that in our radical reactions, you get a bigger mixture of products when you use Cl2, all right? So in reality, the bromine can kind of go at any one of these positions. So any of these hydrogens can be replaced by the bromine, but the major product is the product formed when you add the bromine to the most substituted side. So when you use Cl2, you tend to get more side products, right? So that's why generally when I do these reactions, you use Br2 in light and NBS in light, all right? So that's the first reaction, NBS or Br2 in light with an alkane, okay? Let's look at part B. Part B, we're now going to take an alkene and we're going to make an allylic halide. An allylic halide. And I'll show you what that means in a second. Okay. So in this reaction, we start with an alkene. Again, we can treat this with Br2 right, or NBS and light. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to be substituting a CH. But when you have your alkene, we're going to be substituting a CH that is adjacent to the alkene. That's called the allylic position. Okay, so this is called our allylic position or our allylic carbon. All right, so this is a definition for us. Our allylic carbon is an sp3 carbon that's directly adjacent to an sp2 carbon. So in this molecule here, we have two allylic carbons. Okay, the allylic carbon is an sp3 carbon that's directly attached to our sp2 carbon, right? Here's our sp2 carbons in red. All right, so our allylic carbons are the ones in orange. So in the product we get here, I will replace one of those H's with a bromine, okay? And again, I drew this as symmetric, so it's okay if you drew it at the top or at the bottom, right? That's really the exact same product if you flipped it, all right? Let's look at another example here. Okay, so here I have an alkene. I can treat this with Br2 in light. Okay, I can treat this with Br2 in light. And we're going to substitute the CH at the allylic position. So if you look here in red, here's my sp2 carbons in red. I'll put a black dot at the allylic carbons. There's an allylic carbon on the left and allylic carbon on the right. And what we're going to see, just like we start with the alkene, now I have two choices, right? The major product will be when I replace the hydrogen on the more substituted carbon. So in this example, our reaction is actually going to take place here because this carbon atom only has one hydrogen, it's more substituted, that has three. So it's kind of like what we did with the alkene, all right? In this reaction, we keep our alkene, and now we have our bromine at our allylic position, right? So this is called an allylic bromide. It means we have a bromine connected to a carbon that's next to our double bond, carbon next to our double bond, okay? So these are the two reactions that we're kind of talking about, and these are radical reactions. They're one-electron processes, all right? 
I just want to remind you, right, that we've used BR2 before. So let's kind of put this off to the side. We've used BR2 before, right? So remember, if I take an alkene and treat it with BR2, and I don't specify light or anything else, remember this is one of the first reactions we learned about alkenes. This reaction here will add two bromines, and those will be anti. Okay, so it's important that we know, and sometimes like we've used a solvent, CCL4 was a solvent we could use there, but in this reaction, we're not adding light. There's no light. So we do the reaction where we do our alkene addition reaction, okay? So it's important in all of these examples, right? Br2 and light, NBS and light, Br2 or NBS and light, Br2 and light. The light tells you that we are now undergoing our radical reaction. All right, we're undergoing our radical reaction. All right, and I talked about instead of light, you could also use a radical initiator. Okay, so anything that can sort of generate, anything that can generate sort of a free radical, right, also can be used. So there's other compounds we can add instead of just using light, all right? But generally in our class, we're just going to be using light. We won't really specifically use any specific radical initiators, but I just want to make you aware that a radical initiators can, can uh, undergo these reactions, okay? So two reactions here, alkane to alkyl halide at the most substituted position, alkene to allylic halide at the allylic position, all right? So... Now let's talk about the general mechanism for radical reactions because it's completely different. So when we talk about free radical reactions, we're going to be talking about one electron processes. So there's no carbocations, right? We don't talk about nucleophiles, electrophiles. This is a complete brand new type of reaction and mechanism, all right? And there's actually um, three main steps to a reaction mechanism. So let's look at a specific kind of example here. All right, I'll take this compound here. We can treat this with Br2 and light. And we know that we are going to take the hydrogen on the carbon that's most substituted and replace that with a bromine. All right, so let's look at our general mechanism. There's go always going to be sort of three parts, right? I use Roman numerals to describe these. The, the first part is called initiation, right? That's when we form our free radical. We form our free radical, okay? And it turns out that's what happens when you have Br2 and light. So if I take our Br2 molecule, and I shine light on it, right? So that's my symbol for light. All right, when we shine light on it, something interesting happens, all right? What happens is this molecule can absorb light and the two electrons that are between the Br, there's two electrons here, these electrons can split homolytically, whereas one electron will go to the bromine on the left and one electron will go to the bromine on the right. So we generate two bromine radicals. So they still have three lone pairs, but now there's one free radical. So here's our free radical here, all right? And I, I want to emphasize the arrow I'm using here. I'm using a different type of arrow. This is called a fishhook arrow. So in our regular arrow, we see it's double-sided. That means we're moving two electrons, okay? 
In our radical reactions, we're going to be using a fish hook arrow, right? It's kind of like a fish hook if you've ever gone fishing. It's only got, it's only got kind of one barb. It's got one barb. That means we're moving one electron, right? So if we have a bond here, we know that this bond has two electrons. I'm going to be moving one electron to the bromine on the left, one, one electron to the bromine on the right. All right, so we generate two bromine radicals. So that's our first step, initiation, right? We now form, sorry, we now form our free radical. All right, and you can see here, there's our radical. Part two of our mechanism is called propagation. Propagation. All right. And what's really interesting about this initiation, for this reaction to occur, I only have to do this once. I just have to form one radical. We're going to see our propagation step is going to be like a chain reaction. So here we have a radical, and that will form a new and different radical. Okay, so we have our BR radical here. We have two of them, but we're just going to use one. So I'm going to take my BR radical. This has seven valence electrons, so it's neutral, but it does not have a full octet. Now I'm going to take my alkane, all right, and I'm going to draw in that hydrogen. I'm going to draw in that hydrogen, okay? And what happens here? is this one electron is going to form a new bond with this H. One electron comes from the free radical there. The other electron comes from the bond, right? Remember, this bond has two electrons. So one is forming the bond from the H to the Br. The other one is breaking and becoming a free radical on the carbon atom, OK? So see, you'll see here we're forming our HBr. Right? Don't really need to write that. But we're now also forming our carbon radical. So this is a carbon atom that has four electrons around it. Right, It's got one from each bond plus the radical. So that is neutral, Okay, but it does not have a full octet. So it's, in fact, quite reactive. This is our first propagation step. Right, A Br radical has now formed... A carbon radical. This carbon radical is quite reactive and wants to react. It's now going to react with our Br2. It's going to react with our Br2. So here's our second propagation step. Okay. So what happens? Again, we use a fish hook arrow. This radical is going to form a bond to the Br. I'm going to take one of the electrons, right? A bond has to be two electrons, one from here, one from that bond, and that will form a new bond from my carbon to my Br. Again, this had two electrons, one will go to the Br here. So this will now form our product, right? This bromine is now attached to our carbon atom. So let's draw that in orange. There's our new bond. Here's our Br. Br now has three lone pairs and a bond. The carbon has four bonds. Everything here is neutral. Plus we've now formed another Br radical. Right, so if we look at uh, this bromine here, that bromine has now formed our Br radical there. So this is a propagation step. There's two propagation steps. Here's the first propagation step. We've gone from our Br radical to our carbon radical. Here's our second propagation step. We've gone from our carbon radical back to our Br radical. Okay, so we have two propagation steps. And what happens is this process continues indefinitely. This Br radical can react with another equivalent of my alkane. 
again form another carbon, which then forms our product and another Br. And it happens again and again and again. So this process continues on a hundred times, a thousand times, a million times. This is how we're forming our product. All right. But as chemists, we don't like the idea of reactions continuing on and on forever, right? The reaction does eventually have to stop. And that is our termination step, right? The termination step. In the termination step, you can think of about this as the reaction ending. Here, we're going to combine two radicals. So we get zero radicals. Okay, we combine two radicals, so there's no more radicals here. So it turns out we can do this propagation step with any radicals we want, any radicals we want. So I can take this Br radical, and we could say that could interact with another Br radical that we formed, right? So our termination step here is that radical, and those can react, right, to form our molecule of Br2. And then the reaction, quote unquote, ends. Or you could take a Br radical and maybe instead of abstracting a hydrogen, it interacts with our carbon radical. So the Br will form a new bond to the carbon. Again, notice the fish hook arrows. All right. And we will now form this here. Okay, you could even take two carbon radicals. These can combine here, right, to form sort of something like this. Okay, that's our termination step. And it turns out when we look at these radical mechanisms, we know the initiation happens because the reaction occurs. We know that we do form Br radical. We know the propagation step occurs, right? Because we're forming our product in the reaction. And we know the termination step is happening because the reaction ends. But we don't know which one of these is actually happening because this only has to happen once. This can happen only one time. So if we think our overall reaction you know, we might have a million or 10 million or a trillion reactant molecules here, right? So, you know, a trillion minus one, a billion minus one of the product is formed that way. This reaction happens only one time. So we're never really sure which two radicals are going to combine, right? We know that any of them can combine, Right? But we don't know which ones actually do because it happens for one, it forms one molecule out of a billion or a trillion, right? And we can't really detect that, all right? So these are the three steps for our general radical mechanism. Initiate, propagate, and terminate, okay? But if I ever ask you for the mechanism, if I ask you for the mechanism of this reaction, you don't need to include the termination step because that's not how the product is formed, right? We don't need to include that mechanism, right? So if I ask you to draw the mechanism of how this reacts, right, we don't need to include the termination step. We just have to show the initiation and the two propagation steps, all right? And if I ever give you NBS as a reagent, if I ever give you NBS, you can just write down and use Br2, all right? So let's say in this problem, I'm asking you to do this mechanism. Let's do the, the mechanism here, all right? So we're gonna start with our propagation step. We have Br2. Light shines on this, which causes homolytic cleavage of the BR-BR bond. Okay, so that will form two BR radicals. Okay, I can now take, 
right? So that was sort of our initiation step. That happens one time. We can now take our BR radical. That BR radical is going to react with our alkane, and I just flipped it to make it easier. I have to draw in that H. This Br is going to form a new bond to the H, but the electron comes from the carbon-hydrogen bond. The other electron forms a free radical on the carbon atom, right? So that'll form HBr. Don't really have to write that because it doesn't have carbon atoms. So that will form our radical here. We know that that radical can now react with Br2, right? I only have one Br radical. I've got millions of Br2 molecules floating around in solution. Okay, so let's look at our second propagation step. This will form a bond to our Br, one electron from the free radical. One electron comes from the bond. The other electron forms a Br radical here, and that will then form our product. Right? And again, you're also forming our Br radical. We don't really need to draw that in, right? And then, you know, there's our mechanism, right? And that's all we have to draw. We don't have to draw our termination step. We know that this keeps happening over. We get a loop, like we get a loop and a chain reaction. So we do a loop or a chain reaction. So we form our product, we react. We keep forming, we form our product, we react, this, the two propagation steps happen, we form our product. This loop continues over and over again as we keep forming more and more molecules here, right? So if I ever ask you to draw the mechanism, right, we don't really have to draw in that termination step. We need to know that it exists and that it occurs and that's how the reaction quote unquote ends. But in the mechanism, we just have to draw our initiation and our two propagation steps, okay? All right. So uh, for now, I guess one thing to do for the discussion board is can somebody, let's see if somebody can draw the mechanism for, um, Let's do this compound here. So if we took this alkene and we treated this with Br2 and light, right, what would be the product here and what would be the mechanism for this? And just note, I made this alkene symmetric, right? There's two allylic carbons. So you can react at either one, right? You can react at either one. I made this one symmetric, all right? So this would be a good problem to post to the discussion board. And we'll see a little bit later on why the allylic position is, is reactive. Um, we need to get into a more detailed conversation about resonance, uh, which we'll be doing in a few lectures from now.